Hello again. Uh, we're going to go through another playthrough video. Uh, we're going to do research console again, but this time we're going to just show you the short version of the game. Um, so we've each picked two characters. I have Pi and Buck over here from the Peacemakers. And Bernie's going to be playing with Lucky and Thug <coughs> from the Survivalist faction. Um, so yeah, the idea here is just to kind of show you our quick, what we kind of call the lunchtime version of the game. Uh, deployment's a little closer, and uh, you pick two characters instead of four. And pretty much the rest of the rules are the same. Oh, uh, also you are uh, given five AP to start instead of eight. But otherwise all the, all the rules are consistent with the full game. And we play to three rounds, no matter what happens. Yes, right. Play to three and see who wins at the end of three. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I guess we each get a luck for our characters. Mm -hmm. And we each get a forage card for our characters, as usual. And we'll get started. All right. <clears throat> All right. So now we have our Orange cards, we have our luck. Oh shit, I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> and it's time to roll to see who goes first. Oh man. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Pretty definitive. I think I will go second. Alright. You get an extra card. That's right. Okay. Place people. In the short mode, or lunch mode, we just have to place the characters in one of these four hexes instead of all the way back there. This also makes it a lot faster. Yeah. All right. So I think I'm good with this deployment right here. And I'm going to go first with... Uh, I'm going to line up something for Buck. So my idea is to uh, use caffeinated on Pi. She gives me a free 1 AP move from her active abilities. I'm going to use Infiltrate mm -hmm. um, to line this lady up right there. And then, let's see her. Where I'm going to go closer. Sorry? Here. Um, uh, then you can shoot all three. Yeah, I think I can get... Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. One, two, there we go. For the template. Uh, this has got to do with Buck's shotgun template, which he's going to use um, in the future turn here. So, <coughs> future activation. Um, so, let's see here. So, I've done that. No AP spent yet. So, I want to get somewhere. One, two, three, four. Alright, some friends. Five. Uh, yep, I'm going to run her to here with one AP. That's going to be one noise. And then uh, she's going to spend, let's see her. She's going to spend two uh, to activate Firewall on herself. And that's going to be it for her. Okay. Firewall prevents any Sims from coming in uh, within two, but this one's already in there and next to her. Yep. So I get to attack. With number eight. Oh, wow. two damage. Two yes. Damage. Ouch. All right. All right. Back to me. Um, I will activate Thug first. Thug will spend one AP to perform what is a charge. I think uh, if you watch the previous videos, charge is a combination between a run and an attack for just one AP. Normally it would cost two, but because I only have to spend one. I could get, do his run speed, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but the problem is he normally rolls 6 dice as an attack, but he only gets to roll 4 because it's minus 2 attack. You're too focused on running. Uh, you'll see why this doesn't really matter for Thug soon because I'm going to trigger something crazy with him. <laughs> so 4 dice, I'll attack the laptop person. Um, 2 hits, that's all I need. Um, two hits for Thug is a stun. So I'm going to stun this guy. Now, I'm going to spend another AP to do a normal attack. I get my extra two dice back, or original two dice back. He is now, because he's stunned, dexterity is lowered by one. 
I only need twos or higher. Um, so, he has an ability called Cyber Blast that requires five out of six hits. Normally it's really hard to hit, um, but you definitely want to try to stun someone to, so that you have a chance of getting five out of six. When that happens, uh, it's pulse range one, so that just means everyone around him. So I did a earlier. I did a char uh, run and an attack as part of the charge. I just did another attack. This thing cyber blast causes two more noise, so he's at five total noise. Uh, all the sims in this range, which is next to me, are automatically knocked out, which is pretty awesome. Boom. Yeah. Three implant chips. Um, and the stun goes away. And if there were any non friendly characters that are cybernetic, which is everyone else except for Lucky, um, then I would be able to push, uh, shift them two hexes away. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, this, uh, the scenario of hands on research is knock them out, pick up or scan their implants as you walk over them, and then upload it. Each upload is a point in the center console. Um, as always, just like the other games, uh, knocking out each other's character each time is one point, and then every five sims that you take out is one point. So I am three out of five now. Uh, he does generate five noise. He used two action points. I think the final action point he's going to do... Uh, he could turn on Hyper Aware, which is another ability of his that increases his dexterity to the end of the round from 2 to 3, which is pretty good. Um, or he could just save 3 for Lucky. I think at this point I am going to save 3 for Lucky and uh, 5 Noise. Alright, that means every one of these sims, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so these 3 sims are all going to move towards him. Because Noise is the radius. Now, that could potentially ruin my shotgun shot that I planned out earlier, but I see a way to make it still work. So, they have to move, and they have to get closer to him, but you don't have to move the full two. So, I'm going to move this one one, this one one, and then I'm going to move this one right there. And that concludes the uh, Sims move, and it's Buck's turn to Back shine. To Buck. All right, so Buck's going to activate. Uh, he's just going to walk his three, and then he's going to do his shotgun blast using this template here so I can go two, two, and two so I can affect those six hexes. So with an AoE I roll one uh, die for each potential target under the template and I want to meet or beat their decks. Ugh. Hmm. That, that means one of them is going to live. So I'm going to knock, uh, see here, I'll knock these two out. Um, which gives me two towards my uh, five Sims KO. Uh, I get three noise for that. And that's going to be it for me. Alright, three noise. This one hears him. Uh, I am going to just move this guy one to step on that objective so it makes it hard for him to pick up. Uh, no. Quick wreck on there. Unfortunately, I he can't do that. Him. So he can't actually move. He can. He can come here. Okay. That is close enough. Yeah. Uh, they ignore all difficult terrain, so they can walk through it, but they also don't get cover when they're standing on top of it. <coughs> all right. Back to Lucky. Lucky. One, two, three, four, five, six. Lucky's just going to waltz six, four, five, six. Um, you pick up one of these as you walk over it as a free action and then you can only hold one at a time. He is then going to spend one action point to upload it. Boop, boop. One point on the board. Um, then he's going to one, two, three, four, five. He is going to shoot Buck uh, with his puny four dice. Buck is Dexterity 2, um, and one miss. Um, I am going to spend this one to sidestep. Sidestep is a movement, so any type of movement into or out of a hex with um, one of these objectives, you can pick it up. So very 
uh, maneuverable people actually can pick up multiple ones. Granted, you could only hold one at a time. So let's just say if I had four action point at this point, I might be able to shoot him again, dodge back, and then with the fourth one, upload another one. So um, this is kind of showing you what a very stealthy and mobile character can do. Uh, so I spent one on that. I have two more. Lucky is the only person right now that has luck three plus. So I could trade any die that's three or higher into these luck tokens, which I could use later. Um, I have one left. I'm just gonna shoot Buck again. Why not? Why not? He's easy to hit. Alright, four hits. So I'm just gonna... Oh, was that, that rolled two? over. That was, okay, a two. that was a two early. Okay, I'm gonna spend that two again to sidestep back. And then I'm gonna store three more luck. Lucky needs to have a lot of luck for a lot of things to happen. So he has six luck right now. You could only hold seven total. He's a silent person, so he is done. And I think that is everyone, right? That is everyone, so now we can do the spawn phase. Spawn phase. So, the end phase, if you haven't seen the other videos yet, each noise die on the board will spawn a sims, and your opponent gets to spawn them from the nearest spawn point and immediately activate them, which is moving them up to two, must move at least one hex closer, um, and then attack if they are next to anyone. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to get these out of here because they... They kinda... crawl away. Yep. Yeah, you weren't paying attention. You were just knocking them out. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, I'll start by spawning one on Thug. Thug is the loudest, so we start with him. Yep. Closest one, I believe, is number six. Indeed. So now I have to decide... Do I want to engage him or not? I'm going to opt just to move one to here. Okay, I don't want to do him the favor of giving him an easy uh, knockout like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thug is the next. Or right. Buck, Buck is next. Yeah, He's going to go here. And two hits. Buck has body armor, so reduces that to one. Each hit is a damage for Sims. Yep. Uh, to Pi. All right. Uh, if there's a firewall involved, you kind of have to imagine the two hex thing, so I'm going to come from here instead. I think you have to go. Oh there. yeah, oh yeah, it is closer. So, she's stuck. Yep. Which is really good for me, <laughs> as we'll see. Now that all the noise is gone, uh, this scenario dictates that we each have to spawn two more, starting with the player who went first. Yep. Uh, he has to choose any target of mine. Now Lucky, even though he doesn't make any noise, could be a target. And then the same rules, spawn at the closest spawn point, move, attack. Yep. And no matter who I'm approaching here, uh, Since this is the closest one. So I need to... Here. I will go towards... Thug, that one. Alright. Um, so earlier I said this is good for me because, again, Pi has a 2 hex radius firewall. Um, we have this rule where if the spawn point is occupied because she couldn't move, I, the opponent can spawn in any hex around it. If I spawn in any hex around it, I am inside the firewall. So now I could easily walk to Pi. I just have to end up closer, so I could actually come here and attack her. Uh, one damage? Yep. Back here. Alrighty. And I'm just gonna t -t -t go to here. Alright, and I'm gonna keep pounding pie and be there. Uh, none. Dex four. All right, that is everyone. Firewall and all end uh, abilities that last through the round go away, and we will start round two. Okay, well, I need to try. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, what should I do here? I'm going to start by using Pi's uh, caffeinated to just buy shift on one of these. Engaging. Oh. Oh. Who's going first? Oh, sorry. I'm going first. The reason I'm going first, the reason I get to choose, uh, is because Bernie has a point on the board and I don't. So always the player who's behind gets to choose. Um, otherwise... 
And by you getting going first, I get this awesome extra AP. So I have a sixth AP to use this round. Yep. Um, so I'm kind of taking a huge gamble here, and I'm going to try to knock somebody out before they can get to me. And that somebody is Thug. Um, so I'm going to use my caffeinated for free, mm -hmm. and I'm going to buy shift on, on this one. And then I'm going to take a parting blow, an attack of opportunity from that Sims right there. All right. Uh, anytime you do, that's one damage. Anytime you do anything that distracts you from an enemy next to you, you get attacked. That's picking up stuff, uploading things, shooting ranged attack against someone else, or just walking away without paying attention. Exactly. You can sidestep away for safely. So All right. Now I'm going to start shooting, uh, shooting at Thug. All right. He's dex 2, I have 4 attack, and I get plus 1 because I get uh, marksmanship, which is plus 1 on all ranged attack rolls for peacemakers. And, and since they are friends, they are not counting as engaged, so exactly. you can shoot without any penalty. Alright, so 2 are better, and that's everything. Um, so I'm going to buy with 4 uh, hits, I'm going to buy 3 damage, okay. and that is 2 noise. I'm going to roll it straight to four because I know I'm going to shoot again right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll spend another AP. Oh, and I did grab a luck, sorry, from that. Uh, another really good shot, so I'll do three more damage and another okay. luck. Um, I'm going to keep going because I have to because he'll come get me if I do. <laughs> All right. No luck this time, but I'll take the same result. Mm -hmm. um, what's he at? There? He is at seven. So he's pretty healthy. I need, I'm need. i going to need to use firing line. You haven't shot a fourth time yet. Yeah. But yeah, you need to shoot I will need to use firing, use firing line. line. So I'm going to use firing line first, mm -hmm. just to see how lucky I can get. I do get plus one damage when I use firing line. Mm, that's worth it. Yeah. yeah. So it's possible that I'll be able to spare an AP by doing this. Uh, it's unlikely, but so. And what is firing line? Firing line is the peacemaker's extraordinary tactic. So basically, it's a once per game move that, as a group, uh, each faction each faction has access to one. This is theirs. In this case, it means that all uh, any character while activating can activate this ability, um, and all friendly characters within five of the character that triggers it gets a free shot with plus one damage. So. Uh, she'll start with herself. Mm -hmm. uh, rolling five dice. Oh. And this is when I didn't want the ones. But Good thing you have luck. <laughs> indeed. So I'm going to trade in a luck, turn this to a two, and that makes that four damage. Yep, three left. And then Buck will take a shot. He rolls six dice. Uh, it's going to be three noise for him. And he does immediately get attacked. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Because you're shooting someone else when someone's behind you. Two damage, down to one. Alright. Body armor. And here goes Buck's shot. Okay. Also a couple ones. Uh, I need to get two. Two. Yeah, you need to get two. Because I have three left and you have plus one. Exactly. So, uh, that's definitely enough for two. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm going to pick two from that to cause that damage and then I'll take two luck. And you just away knockout works. There's no permanent death in the game. He can come back this round. There's you don't lose an activation, but I could only spend one action point if I come back the same round I am knocked out the character. Yes. Which he just prevented me from being <laughs> able to knock someone else out over there. Yep. Alright. Now uh I did save myself an AP by doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also got Pi in kind of deep trouble here because she's made a ton of noise and she's already used her movement action. Uh, and she used her free ability to shift that one away. So, and I can't spend two to buy Firewall outright. Why? Um, because she's already spent three and there's a max of four that any character could spend during a turn. Uh -huh. um, oh, before I forget, I'm going to mark down one point for a KO character here. Nice. Um, so what's my best bet is probably to spend uh, one more to shoot and activate Firewall. And hope yeah. you. It might hits. keep her alive. 
on the other hand, uh, if I save two, then with Buck I might be able to knock three of these guys out if they move in the right way. Uh, it's hard to tell what I should do here, but I think I'm going to try to get Firewall uh, by shooting. So, I'll spend the AP. I'm going to roll this up to four <laughs> noise. This is an unusual amount of noise for her. Um, and she's going to attack uh, this one. Five dice, looking for threes or better. Just enough. Just enough. And I'm gonna. You need see. three hits? I do need three hits. Yeah. And I don't have enough luck to do anything cool here. But I do kind of need firewall. So I'm gonna have to suffer a couple of attacks and hope that I live. Oh, you moved, huh? I did move, yeah. Oh. Yep. Okay. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So, it's my turn at eight at ten, I mean one, two, three, four, five, six. The whole board yep. hears her. So I get to control one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Sims. This is usually the fun part. Yeah. Um so yeah, let's have this person, this lady, come and attack. One more damage. Uh -oh. Four plus thing. This one could go in. Yep. Two damage. Ow. Okay. One left. Yep. All right. This one comes here, and then this is the invisible fire uh, firewall line. Yep. This one can kind of come here. That is closer to her. Actually, is that, that's not. That, closer. This is closer to yeah, her. Yes. Uh, but I could attack. Look. Oh, as long as it's one damage, minimum one. Yep. This one. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So here's another trick why the rule is you have to end one closer. I can't enter this firewall, so there's no point in me getting there. I can move two, and this hex right here is closer to her than that hex by one. So that means even though I'm being blocked, I could attack Buck. Uh, one more damage. So that's kind of a cool thing about Sims that... Uh, you always want to look for these opportunities when you get to move that many sims. Now back on my side, I need to not <laughs> have the... Oh, actually, since Thug is knocked out, knocked out just means he's kind of invisible until he decides to activate. This is actually a really good time for me to just make everyone <laughs> walk one and surround him. You saw what he could do earlier with Cyber Blast, so I'm just hoping that next round, or even this round when I wake up, I can make some attacks... He has enough health to not worry too much about them, so he's just going to do that. And that is all the Sims. All right. To me. So, I could either activate Thug right now, but if I do, he might get knocked out again. So I probably will go with Lucky at the moment. Um, so, I will activate Lucky. Uh, Pi only has one hit point left. <laughs> yeah. Lucky doesn't do a lot of um, attacks or damage, but he has this thing called Luck Depot. Uh, Lucky's Depot. So I could spend luck to do a lot more things than just reduce damage or ignore conditions or modify dice. One of the best thing is I can ignore the penalty for an attack, ranged attack against an engaged target for the next attack. It costs me two luck to trigger that ability. Now, usually if I roll four dice, I will lose two dice because I'm trying to shoot in between here. You might say, oh, I don't care, they're the enemy. I, I can hit whatever I want. But strategically, I want to hit Pi. I don't want to waste a shot. So that's why I would lose two. But this two luck allows me to go back to four dice. All right, that's one action. So those are two. Um, yeah, see, if I didn't have that, I might not have gone that. So, with that, I know Pi has two luck left. Uh, so she could ignore it, but I'm fine with that. So I am just going to say I'm going to do one damage. Alright, she will ignore that. Okay, the good news is Lucky's luck value is three. So I actually get a luck back, even though I didn't roll that high. Uh, Lucky's going to shoot again and spend two more luck to ignore the penalty. Uh, Pi's going to throw her pot lid up. Alright. Okay, so. Um, I will again do one damage that gets absorbed by the um, pot lid, but I get one more luck back. 
And I'm gonna shoot a third time. Since Thug can only use one, I might as well keep shooting. <laughs> yep. uh, I will spend two again. Actually, I'm not gonna spend two again because this time I think I just need to do one damage. She has no luck, she has no secret cards that might be able to <laughs> absorb it. So, yep, yeah, that's uh, one damage for the win, or actually for the knockout. And I could get another luck back. So that is how Lucky's actually used. He has other things that he could use luck for, like gain one more damage in the next attack or plus one dexterity till the end of the round. So if I feel that he's in danger of everyone shooting at him this round, I would do that. Um, he generates no noise and he's probably going to chill there for now and be done. All right. Hmm. So that leaves me with Buck. What is Buck gonna do? Oh, actually, I have one left, and Thug cannot do anything, so I'm just going to draw one more Forge card as well. Okay. Um, so with Buck, I don't have a whole lot I can do. So, I'm just going to punch one of these guys in front of me. Mm -hmm. and In the hopes of stunning it so I don't get attacked by too many. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. I, will, I need three to stun. <laughs> uh, so I'll spend those three on a stun. Uh, and then I will take one luck for the five. Which one are you stunning? Uh, this one right here. Okay. <clears throat> and that's it for Buck. That raises him up to four noise. Four noise. Um, he's actually going to play a Cone of Silence, ah. which allows him to remove four noise. Nice. So that way he won't be spawning any new ones near him because I've got plenty of company. And the good thing with this one is um, he is adjacent, he would normally attack, but he's stunned. They remove stun at the end of the round, So, but this one's not stunned. So I do get a one attack, two damage, down to one. Okay, um, back to me. I must activate Thug, so no more hiding. He takes away the knockout. He Heals back to this recovery level right here, this little EKG thing. And he can only spend one action point, which means the extra action point I got is wasted. Um, this generally doesn't happen as much in the four player game, but in a two or two character game, uh, it's definitely a good strategy to do that first strike. But um, So he did that really well. So I will spend this one and just punch any, I'll punch this number nine with six dice. All right, four hits. Um, actually, this is worth spending one luck um, to go to five hits and then trigger Cyber Blast again. Boom. Does generate two noise again with plus one for hitting, and that is why I moved those three next to him, because I had a chance and I had a luck, and it was relatively doable to try to get that result. Uh, he hasn't walked yet, so he's just going to go one, two, three, Ooh. one, two, three, and grab one of them, but I have no, act or I have an action point, but I can't spend it because he was knocked out earlier, so I can't try to score. Um, oh, shoot. I just realized Lucky has one. Oh. Yeah, I'll do it next round. All right. You did score another point from knocking out Sims, though. You oh, yeah. The remainder of one. Yes, remainder of one. I got to five and then plus one. So I am at two points with Sims. Cool. All right. Um, and that is the end. Time to spawn. So these go away. They crawl away. Yeah, uh, spawn. All right. There's only one person that made noise. And only one place that I'm allowed to spawn from, so I'll throw this guy. I'm gonna hang him back there. All right, and then the round spawn of two each. You went first. Yes, I did. You have to choose Lucky or Thug. I will choose Lucky. I'll put one here. Uh, Pi is invisible. Even though she got knocked out, she activated, so next round she'll still be able to do four actions. But she is not a valid target right now, which is a, kind of a handicap system of being knocked out. Uh, so it's Buck all the time. 
<laughs> and unless I roll snake eyes, I always do one damage. Back to you. Mm, <clears throat> I'll go with Thug again. And I'll pull in there. And Buck again. Boom boom. Oh, he is surrounded. He is surrounded. Oh, almost snake eyes. <laughs> And he's down at halfway, so... Yeah, death by a thousand cuts. That is the end of round three. Sims do remove stun. Characters do not. And we will continue to round three, which is the final round. It's the final round. I'm behind in points, and... I don't think there's a benefit for me going first. With Pi knocked out, it's better for me to kind of leave her to the end. Otherwise, she's at great risk of being knocked mm -hmm. out again. So, in this instance, I'm going to hang on to the uh, extra AP here and give Bernie the right to go first. All right. I'm going first. So, I guess... I should have Thug go first. Thug's also vulnerable because yeah. he's at half his health. So. I know. So if I don't do it, and he ends up doing spending only one AP again. So Thug will spend one to immediately upload the implant he gathered, giving me my second scenario objective point. Then he will just walk. One, two, three. And then make an attack with six dice. On laptop. Okay, four. It's not what I wanted, but it's not bad either. So he is going to, and this is kind of where um, I get to decide the order of how I choose my abilities. So he has stun that costs two, and his two damage also costs two. So if I just did stun and then two damage, um, he gets plus one damage on anything that's done. I could just knock it out immediately. Instead of doing that, though, I want to trigger Cyber Blast somehow um, because it's more likely I do that the next hit. I'm going to spend two to stun the laptop person and then the other two to get luck. This way, I have two luck because I spent my previous ones. Uh, if I didn't do that, I could just knock it out and then now I have to try to do four hits again. If I roll poorly, I have no backup. So I'd rather do this. Just one noise. And then I will do one more attack. Um, yes. Okay, good thing I got that luck. I am going to switch that to three with my one of my luck and cyber blast them away. Boom, for two. Um, let's see. Yep. And at this point, I think I am going to... Uh, let's see if I did that. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to leave it like that. And call it a day, Cyber Blast. Another attack goes to two, Cyber Blast costs two, it is four. So, a couple Sims here, him. Good deal. Let's see, I'm gonna move this one to there. And now the question is, do I wanna knock him out again, or <laughs> do I wanna try to, let's see here, score some points. That is two more Sims, but I don't think I can get to five again. <coughs> Let me think here. So technically, this is closer. Yep. So I think I'll do that and roll an attack on Lucky. All right. One Ooh, damage. One damage. Wow. So the survivalist ability, Peacemaker is plus one on uh, attack. It's danger sense. I get three extra hit points per person against Sims attacks. So I will absorb that. One of the three danger sense. And now it's time to activate Buck. Yep. Uh, let's see here. He's going to shoot his shotgun this way mm -hmm. and try to knock these two guys out. All right. Uh, there goes my spend of AP, and I'm only rolling two dice. Come on. Huh? Eh, not quite enough, but I got a luck. So I'll roll this to a three and knock both of these guys out. 
Um, that <coughs> puts me one shy of a point. So I have to decide what I want to do here. I definitely want to score one of those points. So I think that's my top priority right now. I'm just going to walk away and immediately take two attacks. All right. It's one damage and one damage. That's always so one and two. So he's getting low. So two, three. Um, he has this in tow, and so he's going to spend one more just to upload that and score a scenario objective point. Nice. Um, so let's see here. Should I do it something else? It's tempting to heal, but that only leaves two or pie. <coughs> let's not forget he made three noise, so he's going to have some friends coming up. Mm -hmm. I do want to knock out one more Sims if I can. Pi has no luck. Pi has no luck. Yeah, so I think it's better if Buck just takes a shot at a Sims right now. Um, and I think this is a good one to shoot because once Pi comes back, it's going to be her problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to take a sh rain shot at that one. We'll roll this up to six. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. And roll six dice for the attack. Now what I need is three. And oh. I need five successes to get that. I only have two. Ah, you I do have, have three luck. Three luck, so I'm gonna have to spend them. I would have liked to save two of those for damage reduction, but all three go to threes. Such boop, is the breaks. Boop, boop. So this one goes. There and drops a little friend right here, um, and that's going to be the end of Buck's activation. All right, six noise. That's every Sims on the board again. This sure is, is fun. <laughs> boop boop. Uh, one damage. Hmm. Boop. Boop. Can't attack Pi. Plenty of problems, though. Yep. Uh, I'm actually going to move this one to attack him. One more damage. And then this one, I'm going to stand on that. Dang. Just to make it messy. Yep. Alright, back to Lucky. Lucky has one on him, so he's just going to upload it. For one more. And then he hasn't moved yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I was like, oh shoot, I can't reach it. But their extraordinary tactic, like the fire in line thing, is everyone for themselves. So everyone gets to sidestep up to their walk speed. For Thug, it's not really that useful. He's just actually just going to pick this up and retreat, hold on to it. And then Lucky can finish his final thing and spend the last AP to upload. For fourth. Scenario objective point, and that is all the actions I have. All right, to you. I forgot the whole reason I knocked out that. Oh yeah, was to so give yourself that another point. <laughs> brought me up to this. Okay, uh, so I have to do. I have to activate pie. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if I can do anything here. So let's see. What can I do? I think I'm only, no matter what I do, I'm only going to be able to score one more point, unfortunately. Um, so, and I'm going to need a lot of luck to do it. Or maybe some luck. Zico for a thug. Oh, we need three shots. Yeah, I couldn't do it, so. Um, so... I think I will uh, punch number 11 here, mm -hmm. which is going to be caffeinated. Yeah. Okay. Um, I need some luck. Oh. Actually, maybe it is better to caffeinate her away and then shoot one. Because I think I can survive. So, yeah, I'm going to... Oh, let's see here. I will move this one. 
uh, with caffeinated, I'll use infiltrate. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Might as well take a soft target here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to knock a, um, lucky out, unfortunately. So, so two, two, two and two. Danger sense gone and one damage. Uh, yeah. So then, let's see here. What is the play? So that was my free one. I can shift for two. Oh, there was one underneath that one. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Probably should have shifted. Yep. We could take that back. I think we got. Okay. Yeah, you should infiltrate one for free, shift another, grab it, and take an attack to upload. Yep, that's the trick. Yep. Okay, well, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's late. It is late. So. All right, so we'll infiltrate this one out of town here. One, yeah. two, three, four. I will risk that. No, uh, I'll just shift it. Uh, can shift, you shift doesn't can you really shift help. That yeah, one exactly. Out. I'll shift that one, and then I'll take a. Oh, this is so dangerous. I'll take a blow. No, nope. safe. All right. And I'll upload and take another parting blow. Uh, do you have four hit? Oh, actually. F5. Okay. So, two blows. Yep. Uh, nothing, huh? You might survive. One damage. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the round, these two are next to you. Yep. Ow. Two damage. One. Down oh, oh, oh yep. barely survived. Alright. And that is the end. That is it. So, I have five points. And I just barely got to four. All right, so um, that was a close game. And you can see we pretty much did that with explanation in way under an hour. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is the what we call the short game or the lunchtime version. You can still pretty much get almost as much, uh, as many decisions and tactical death, but you could get it really fast, play a game within an hour. Uh, and just kind of enjoy kind of the different combinations of pairings of these uh, characters. All right. See you next time. All right. Thanks.